Hello everyone, and welcome to the latest Beatles News Brief, the first show of the new year. I'm your host, Steve Marinucci. Today is January 12th, 2019, and I want to welcome the addition of, for the new year of Beatlesarama.com to the places where you can find our show. Thanks, Pat, for bringing the show on your station, and thank you, listeners of Beatlesarama, for joining us. Later on today's show, we'll have an extra segment in which contributing editor and Beatleness author Candy Leonard and myself will discuss Paul McCartney's newest song, Get It Enough. But now, here's the latest Beatles news. Paul McCartney announced January 10th a one-day film engagement around the world of The Bruce McMouth Show. It'll play on January 21st. The film was included for the first time in the new Wings Red Rose Speedway and Wing 71 to 73 box sets, but this will mark the first time it's been shown in theaters. The film features footage from the 72 Wings European tour. I've seen the film, and it's a really cute little film. I'm not sure that a film engagement is really that good an idea because it's such a um, it's such a uh, you know a, a vanity project kind of thing. You know, it's a little more, it's not as wide open, for example, as Rock Show was. But, anyway, he's doing it, and it'll give people a chance to see it on a, on in a big screen format, which is a, a good thing. So, um, some of the characters, by the way, in the film are voiced by Paul and Linda McCartney. The theatrical showings will have a new audio mix, according to the announcement. Here are the theaters in the U.S. showing it. Uh, at the, in New York at the IFC Center, Los Angeles at the Arclight in Hollywood, Bethesda, Maryland at the Arclight Bethesda, Chicago at the Arclight Chicago, Dallas at the Angelica, Hollywood at the Kahala, Kahala 8, Nashville at the Belcourt Theater, Phoenix at Film Bar, Sacramento in the Tower Theater, San Diego at Angelica and Carmel Mountain, San Rafael in San Rafael Film Center, and Seattle in SIF Uptown, that's S-I-F-F. In the UK, it'll be shown in the Everyman Cinema in Liverpool and the Everyman Cinema in Hempstead. Paul's also put out an official podcast for the remasters of Red Rose Speedway and Wildlife that you can find through his website. Ringo's Twitter account has been fairly quiet lately, although he published this on Thursday. Quote, Well, here we go again. You never give me your money Friday. Peace and love. Great track. Peace and love. Sounds like Ringo. And we always love reading Yoko's Twitter account. Here's her latest. It says, Your love will be infectious and help to create heaven on earth. My fantasy garden is the reality which is happening now. It's about to cover the earth with love. We had a wild idea, and I actually don't generally send her questions, but I did just send her off a question for her Q&A, weekly Q&A feature that I hope she'll answer, and I'm wondering what she how she feels about Ruth Bader Ginsburg so we'll see if she answers that question anyway here's some chart positions from the Billboard issue of January 12th on the Billboard 200 number 81 down from 68 is the White Album number 126 down from 117 is Abbey Road and 128 up from 163 is Beatles 1 on the uh, Artist 100 the Beatles are at number 41. Top album sales, number 24 down from 20 is the White Album. Number 58 down from 3 is Egypt Station. Number 68 down from 54 is Abbey Road. Number 86 down from 67 is Sgt. Pepper. And number 91 back on the chart is The Beatles 1. Catalog albums, number 11 up from number 24 is The White Album. And I just want to say that it's been interesting watching the chart, um, all the chart uh, positions of the White Album that have happened since the reissue of the box set. It really has made quite an impact on the charts. Um, Anyway, uh, number 30, up from 44 on the catalog album chart, is Abbey Road. 
Number 22 up from 33 is The Beatles 1. Vinyl, number 9 down from 5 is Abbey Road. Number 14 down from 8 is The White Album. Number 20 down from 9 is Sgt. Pepper. The Final Holiday 100, number 17 down from 15 is Happy Christmas. Number 22 down from 16 is Wonderful Christmas Time. Holiday Streaming, again the final charts, number 21 down from 18, Happy Christmas. Number 22 down from 20, Wonderful Christmas Time. Holiday Airplay, number 23 down from 21 is Happy Christmas. A couple of chart positions from the UK for the week of January 10th. The top 100 albums at number 62 down from 60 is The Beatles 1. And number 83 down from 55 is The White Album. On the streaming chart, number 73 down from 61 is The Beatles 1. On the vinyl chart, uh, number 24 up from 25 is The White Album. And number 37... Uh, 20, excuse me, 25 up from 37 is Sgt. Pepper. And on the end of the year album charts, uh, the Beatles' White Album clocked in at number 73, and number 87 uh, was the Beatles' One. Interesting that Egypt Station did not make their year on chart. And now Candy Leonard and I give our thoughts on the new McCartney song, Get Enough. I'm here with Candy Leonard, contributing editor of Beatle News Briefs and the author of the most excellent book, Beatleness. Hello, Candy. Hey, Steve. How you doing? All right. And we're going to talk about Get Enough, the McCartney song that was released on New Year's Eve that we, we, we've we discussed privately among ourselves, but we've we wanted to bring this out. We wanted to discuss. We have some differences of opinion, I think. Do we? I think we do. I think okay. we do. Um, about it. And let me say, first of all, when I first heard the song on New Year's Eve, I I was not in, overwhelmed with it. I mean, I don't think it's great. It's the best thing he's ever done. I am not among those, though, who condemned it right away and, and said it's awful because of the auto-tune. I actually think the auto-tune works to its advantage, and he does... I mean, it's basically an experimental tune, and and I think it... I think it's... The auto-tune is used very tastefully, and I was listening to it this afternoon as, as you know, a, in preparation for this, and I was, you know, comparing, and I couldn't think of specific songs, but there are some R&B songs that use it unmercifully that are awful, this is right, not, but they're not Paul McCartney. Huh? But, but they're not Paul McCartney. That's true. But this is not. If if I had to judge how judge this, if I had to judge the song itself, first of all, I don't personally think the song is that bad. I don't think the auto tune is used that badly. In fact, I'm not. One of those. There were. I, I know a lot of people have condemned it on the basis, the fact that he uses auto tune itself. I'm not that way. I think. I think um, the auto tune is used. I don't know if I'm nicely is the word. Judiciously. I, okay. Thank you. But I don't think. I don't think it's. I don't think it's awful. I, I don't think the song is awful. I, I. You know. I don't. Do I? If you ask me. Do I wish it was not there? Eh, that would be a tough one to, to, to say because it's woven so well and it's woven very intricately into the song. So I don't know that I could I could say that. But I, well, it's go ahead. Hard to what imagine you... the song really without the auto tune mm-hmm. because it, it seems that I mean even if you even if one agrees that it was a, a, a judicious a judicious use of auto tune, it's still pretty pervasive in the song. So it's kind mm-hmm. of hard to. I, 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 uh, well, okay, yeah, it is pretty. It, I mean, the fact that he uses it at all. I mean, it t- that it tends to be. When anybody uses it, it tends to be pervasive because of what what it sounds like. Really. Right, right. Well, I just read something tonight where um, 
you know, the, the I guess the the uh, line is that, you know, well, the Beatles, you know, Paul McCartney has always embraced new technology. So it's just another, you know, he's like playful, you know, interested in new technology, whatever. You know, I suppose that, you know, there's some, you know, maybe he just was like wanted to see what it'd be like to do a song with auto. Yeah, and I, and I thought of that too. I, I, I thought it might be kind of an experimental thing on his part. Right. Um, I don't. Well, you, let me ask you a question, though. Hmm. When you say experimental, mm-hmm. I'm not sure what that really means in, with the, in the way that you're using it. Well, I think he's testing. He might be testing the waters a little bit um, for himself because this is a, 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 a avenue he hasn't tread before. I mean, he's mm-hmm. done he's done experimental things. I mean, he's got, he's done different things before. Yeah, he hasn't. He hasn't just you know, um, stayed on the road before. I mean, he's gone off the road occasionally yeah. with other songs. And this mm-hmm. is one of those, one of those times, whether or not it, you know, whether or not you like it or whether or not it's appropriate for him, I guess depends on your point of view. I don't, again, see that it's not, it, it, that it doesn't entirely, you know, he doesn't entirely... Uh, what am I trying to say? That it isn't entirely <laughs> demolished. Um, I'm sorry, what? I'm, I'm, I'm rambling on here. Um, no. that, that it isn't, a pro- I, I guess isn't appropriate is probably the best word. Because it, I think it works and, and for what he does with it. Um, and actually, what, what the, the, the one thing, or the, one of the things that attracts me to the song is the end of the song after he goes... Um, I can't get enough, and then he goes into this kind of uh, harmonious thing that sounds like Elton John. That reminds me of Elton John. You know what I'm talking about? Near the yeah, it's like that where he goes, "Ooh," it sort of changes. Right. Yeah. And you I, know that, that? I think that's the nicest part. Yeah, I know, and I and I think that's probably one of the reasons why I'm not uh, I'm not hating the song um, because it it does have that redeeming quality to it, and. I think if if he had gone through and had done a complete auto tune using the auto tune vocal from beginning to end, I think I probably would hate it. But he, again, there's enough of him in there. Him, the, him being the Paul McCartney we all know. Right. It has McCartney ness. <laughs> I don't believe you came up with that word. <laughs> Well, That's actually, wonderful. I, I used it before. I used, I wrote a review of Egypt Station for Culture Sonar, and I used that <laughs> word. But that's what it is. I mean, it comes right. It's like this McCartneyness comes through. Right. You had a. You you better trademark that. Trademark <laughs> that word. But yeah, no, it does, and and I think that's why I'm not completely. Um. I'm not completely hating the song because of that, because it does have some McCartneyness to it. If it didn't, I mean, if it, uh, um, let me think. uh, I guess, and I'm, uh, I'm I'm not. I haven't listened to the song um, before I'm I'm saying this, so it's just coming up in my brain. Is uh, coming up um, where he he did all that kind of vocal stuff. you know, I mean, that was a little sillier than this. this is, but on, on coming up, what, what do you mean, the vocal stuff? Well, I like maybe, coming up. Maybe that's the wrong. That, maybe that's yeah, the wrong. I like that a lot. Yeah, maybe it's the wrong song to think of. I'm thinking, you know, some of the uh, songs where he has done, you know, experimental stuff uh, where he's played around. Um, I mean, again, this is, and I'm probably I'm drifting off into nowhere here. But again, this is not. Um, I, I don't think this is really horrible. I, there are songs on Egypt Station that I can, that I have trouble sitting through, that I have trouble listening to, because hmm. I, I I can't I can't take them. This is not one of those songs, even though it's not wow. on the, it's okay. not on the album. And I and I and I think I mean the fact that I, you know, I sat in my car. And I listened to it going t- during a fifteen-minute ride to the st- store and back, and and barely took it off my 
you know, my radio says a lot that I was able to sit through it and without tearing my hair out. Yeah, but listen, but you're talking about a Paul McCartney song. Like, you know, like that's a pretty low bar that you're setting, no? Well, no, I mean, I, I, I again, and I've, I, I've mentioned this, we've talked about this, you and I, I'm not the biggest fan of Egypt Station. I know some people are. I had I have not been able to really get into Egypt Station as much as a lot of people have. There are songs on Egypt Station I like. Yeah, I'm actually surprised that you don't that you are kind of cool on Egypt Station, but that you like this. Yeah, because I'm kind of the reverse. Like I thought, I mean, I found Egypt Station to be like a a, a uh, you know I was pleasantly surprised, mm-hmm. and I and I kind of liked it, particularly the upbeat ones. My, With this, I I can't get excited. <laughs> I I've gotten enough. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think the I think the thing with Egypt Station, and and again, I like individual songs. Is that the 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 transition from song to song is kind of jarring at times for me, mm-hmm. and I haven't been able to to um, adjust to that. Uh, whereas this is only one song, and I can, and I only have to listen to the one song, and and you know for what it is, and mm-hmm. you know I can I can listen to it, and you know it's there. Um, I mean, like I said, some of the other songs on Egypt Station I do like. Um, you know, um, I have to call up. I have to call up my. Uh, uh, call it up on my phone here to look at the. Um... When I first heard "Get Enough," I I frankly could not listen. I I didn't I didn't want to listen to it all the way through. I it, it I found it a little bit. Um, I, I don't know. I didn't like it. Really? <laughs> and then uh, you know I went back actually today. I didn't listen to it between, and I said you know since I knew we'd be talking about it, I you know I, I had planned to go back and kind of give it a closer listening and. Uh, I don't know. Like I don't understand fully like what he was trying to accomplish with this. And you know, like you know, like I understand like you call it experimental and yes, it certainly is um in the best sense of the word, but it's also it's, it it almost feels like market research to me. What the uh, are you talking about the album? The song. Oh, you the know, song. Like, See, that's the way that's the way I feel kind of like the whole album. Because I mean, I like for example, I like I don't know. I even uh, even kind of l- like come on to me, even though I kind of grit my teeth a little bit. Um, happy with you, I like. Who cares? I'm eh, okay with. I like who cares a lot. I think it's a, I think it's like the best thing he's done in a really long time. Mm-hmm. Um, I like that a lot. Fa you is um, okay. Yeah, so the, the guy who produced Fa you is the same guy who did this, right? right? Right. And, you know, like, this is a young guy, you know, he can say he worked with Paul McCartney, you know, but, like, I don't think the product is so great. I have to, I don't know, I just, uh, I don't uh, know. I, I think he's maybe bringing out Paul's worst impulses. Um, I mean, I think the the last half of the album is is just uh, is just really hard for me to settle into except for despite repeated warnings i think i i like that Mm -hmm. but the others but the other songs just you know are like jarring from one to the one to the next yeah they just they're and 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 whereas with with get enough it's not it's not um it's just the one song obviously but i i can i can handle i like get enough for what it is um, well what is it <laughs> well it's a I, I guess you could call it a modern love song okay I'll, yeah yeah I, I would agree it's I, a modern I, I, love I think that's I think really that that's what it comes down to yeah. um, and I, I mean Paul I mean he does not have a voice anymore he just doesn't well see and, now we were you and I have discussed this and I was listening very carefully on this to hear traces of that, and I've heard worse instances of 
of that, certainly on live recordings, but not not so much on this, though. I think this, you know. Well, I mean, that raises the question, is the auto-tune meant to enhance or augment, or is it meant as a special effect, or a little of both, you know? Um, I think it's a special effect. I don't think I don't think it, uh, it to use it as augmenting um, would be a mistake for for right. anybody for anybody not just him. I'm sorry. Go ahead. For it'd be a mistake for anybody not just him because that's not really it's not meant to um, it's not meant to make your uh, at least I, the way I see it even on R and B recordings it's not meant to make your voice sound better. It's 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 a right. special it's a special effect, right? But I mean, Paul must know that. I mean, the way I described it in the review I wrote of Egypt Station, I would and I this record I would say the same thing is that it um, his voice has no color anymore. That's how I would describe it, and so he must know this. Or whatever this thing I'm, you know, he knows his voice is not what it was. I, and I, so I would. It's ag- possible that part of the experiment here was, hey, what would happen if I used auto tune? That's po- very, that's very possible. And and the the comment that he does, his voice doesn't have color doesn't necessarily take away from um doesn't necessarily you know take the whole thing down. As far as I'm concerned, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I have a lot of mixed feelings about. I mean, it. voices I voices get older. Look at a, a, another example of that. Well, it, actually, there's two examples. One is is Frank Sinatra before he passed away. His okay. voice, his voice, um, definitely was not the way it was during the reprise years. Mm-hmm. The the really good reprise years and the capital years, and and then right. another example is Tony Bennett now, who is I mean as much and I'm big fans of of both of their recordings, and I listen to some of Tony's stuff now, and you kind of go, hmm, the color the I think you could use the same term on Tony Bennett, but. Tony, I mean, Tony hasn't changed anything. Tony, Tony doesn't go anywhere with his stuff. I mean, he doesn't experiment. Mm-hmm. You know, he does what he he knows what he does good, and he does it. And right. and and Paul, of course, does look. I mean, he's done. You know, um, Kanye West. I mean, he's done that. Well, that you know, I, but, some of the couple of things I read said that it, it was evocative of Bon Iver. Who I don't know a lot about. I saw them once on Colbert, but I can't say that I'm familiar with with, with I'm, what I'm, he does. I'm not. I mean, I like I, if it if it if it makes a difference. I like this better than four or five seconds. Oh, okay, but but again, I I, I say to you, that's a low bar. <laughs> Okay. I don't know. I mean, okay, but I mean, but here? it's still there's still experimental pieces. There's still Paul, you know, taking off in different areas. But yeah. four or five seconds does even even live. And I've heard him, and I heard him do it live. You know, in Fresno. Um, you know, what was it? Two years ago, and. It didn't make it for me live either. It just the song doesn't work. Whereas I'd be curious to see if he does this live. I'd be very interested to see if he does this I, live. I, I would predict that he would not, but I could be completely wrong. I didn't think he'd do four or five seconds live, and he and he surprised the hell out of me. So yeah, yeah. I I can't quite figure out what his you know what he's about. I mean. I think he loves doing this, you know, and so he should keep doing it. But I think there's also this issue that his voice is kind of shot, you know, and so, you know, here's the thing. He is Paul McCartney, right? So, I mean, I, I was thinking about this, you know, in, in in the aftermath of Egypt Station, which, as I said, I kind of liked, and then all the White Album focus in the fall, mm-hmm. which I listened to quite a bit. And so I'm hearing this utterly 
beautiful, beautiful voice. I mean, this is an instrument, you know, that he just, you know, he just had this incredible voice. And so it, the contrast for me was, was very, um, was very apparent. And I think, you know, we, it's like, this is the same guy who sang yesterday. This is the same guy who sang for no one. Yep. Yep. This is the guy, same guy who sang back in the USSR. Um, right. You and know. it's the same guy who's saying, I'll go even further. And I'm, I'm not a huge, generally a huge fan of Beatles solo work, but he's the same guy who sang the songs on band on the run, which were, inc- you know, incredible vocals. Right. Yeah. And I, and I actually thought the stuff on, on the McCartney box sets, the Red Rose Speedway and, and Wildlife were, were good. I mean, that was, you know, he was he was good then, you know. Right, so at some point it started, you know, I don't know when. I mean, I, well, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know if I want, I, I don't know if, I mean, yeah, it, it, everybody, again, everybody gets older, you know, I mean. Right, and I, and, right, I, yeah, I, I, <laughs> I don't. The other thing I, that disturbed me was he did a little video, I guess, it, from St. Bart's in his swimming trunks. <laughs> did you see that? Uh, kind of, a little bit, yeah, a little bit. I, I, mean, I, 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 I ripped a tie dye t shirt and like sunglasses and his swimming trunks, and he did some kind of little dance or whatever. I mean, it was sort of, you know, like, like I have a huge fondness for him. So, like, I think it's kind of cute, but at the same time, I'm thinking, like, why is he doing this? Because he can, because he knows, because he. Know, I mean, if you were Paul McCartney and everything you did got a lot of attention, would you? I mean, would you do things that you probably wouldn't do? You know. What do you mean? I'm not sure what you mean. Well, I mean, I mean, he. Like I said, he. Anything he does gets attention. Mm-hmm. Any anything. Um, and every day he, I have a piece of news like McCartney news every single day on my phone. Right, and in fact, you were the one that told me because I didn't even see it until after you showed it to me. The picture of him flipping off the paparazzi, double bird for yeah. the paparazzi. Yeah. yeah, I mean that. You know, I mean that. Anything. See, the thing is that anything he does gets attention. Anything. Exactly. Exactly. Even things that he don't, he doesn't mean to get attention for. That he would and rather he keep private. He loves attention. He loves it. I think he does, and yeah. I think that gets that's part of what a lot of this all is because he loves. But it he keeps loves him it. young. It keeps him engaged. He, fe- you know, I I refer to him sometimes as Sir Joy Spreader. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like. Everywhere he goes, any anything he touches, it just he just people just love him so much. So what I th- I mean, I, I was thinking like, what else should Paul be doing now? <laughs> okay, and so do you want me to tell you what I think he should be doing now? Go ahead. Okay, so I think he should work with younger artists. Hmm. You know. Okay. And in other words, instead of them leading him astray, maybe he can impart some of his deep wisdom and creativity, which he still obviously has, to younger artists. So I think that's one thing he should do. I think he should write a memoir in the spirit of Dylan's Chronicles, you know, kind of like sort of stream of consciousness Mm -hmm. essays. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he should do that. I think he should become a public speaker. (laughs) I mean, all these things. I want to say, and he should, he should like, you know, he 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 should be an ambassador of some kind. Like he should be an ambassador for music education. He should be ambassador for vegetarianism. He's already he's already been that. Right, but he can do it more. He should endow a music school or create an endowment of some kind. Which he always, he's, he's already do, he's already done that with Lipa. Right, but that's one thing. I mean, he could he could. You know, set up a foundation where schools across America could apply for funds. I mean, there's like a mm. whole lot of shit he could do that would be in his. He'd still be able to. I get. It. I don't want it to sound like oh, he should like never sing again. I'm not saying that because obviously the music is his thing. But I, I just, you know, it's like I don't know. Like at some point, he needs to stop. Mm. I, I I know. The, the picture that comes into my mind is, well, the last time I saw him now was in Fresno. I haven't seen him since Fresno. Is when he comes out on stage 
and people start going crazy and he you can tell he absolutely loves it and I then know. when he do, and when he does the does the thing about I want to take this all in the, uh, while he's he's actually putting on a little show there mm-hmm. it's not all show Oh, definitely not. In fact, there's a line on Egypt Station, which I can't recall right now, but I remember making a note of it. I forget what song it's in, where the gist of it, I mean, it was more poetic than this, but the gist of it was basically, this is what's keeping me alive. You know, like the, the interaction with people and... and um, yeah, I, 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 remember the line, I remember the line. I don't remember the song, though. Right, but, but he yeah. can see that in other ways, you know? Like... Again, like, you know, I don't want to, like, okay, it's time to, like, put him out to pasture. Like, that's not really what I'm saying. But I do think that given, you know, given the body of work that that he has given the world, I, I don't know if he needs to add to that body of work anymore in this in this way. Maybe he can write songs for other people. Maybe he can produce for other artists. I, I don't know, you know. Mm-hmm. Hearing him sing just makes me sad. I mean, maybe this is just me. I don't know. I just, it's it just, I, I think I mentioned to you when I saw Denny Lane the other night, and he did not all of Band on the Run, but most of it. And, you know, of course, you know, Paul's voice on Band on the Run is great. And, you know, Denny Lane's voice is like so-so. But there was a, you know, it, the voice had body to like, it, you know, and it just kind of made me sad because I'm thinking like Paul could not do this now. We were going to, we were actually, we were going to talk about that since you did, you did see Denny. Um, how, how was the show? It was great. It was a lot of fun. I mean, he, it was nice. I mean, there were a couple, I can't remember what song it was, but... There was some song he played. I think it was a Moody song that I hadn't heard in I can't you know decades and decades. And as soon as I heard it, it just blew my mind. I, I wish I could remember which you're one. Not it talking, was. You're not obviously you're, you're not talking about Go Now. No, no, no. Of course not. Yeah. It's interesting. He opened with Go Now. Did he really? Yeah, he basically. I mean, there was some little sort of in, some little short. Oh, I think there might have even been instrumental, like some little thing he did. And then he did Go Now. I mean, a lot of this, which was very nice, a lot of the songs were kind of short, you know, like he kind of like, which pop songs are, you know, he kind of, you know, boom, boom, boom. But then he got, you know, he did a lot of band on the run. He didn't do Hell on Wheels. And my friend and I realized the reason he did Hell on Wheels because that was only on the American version, I guess. Hmm. Interesting. Right? I, I, yeah. Well, I mean, it, it, you know, McCartney does... Does Mullock and Tyre in Europe? You know, I mean, he could have, yeah. he could have, he could have, he could have done, he could have done, he could have done Helen Wills, but oh well. Anyway, yeah, he did Mullock and Tyre. That was beautiful, and it got me thinking too again about Paul. You know, Paul is a, he, he's very shrewd. You know, he's, and you take a song like Mullock and Tyre, which, like, if you didn't know, you think was an old Irish ballad or something. It's just so, it has such an authentic old sound that and you know that his christmas song you know you sort of get the sense that he wanted to he he oh God, he, he he was aware along his career journey i think he was aware of leaving some special milestones that were going to be like almost transcendent mm-hmm. it was nice i mean it was i mean i was very intrigued by the audience i was i always wonder you know because i'm sort of a people watcher and sociologist and all that and I always wonder like who are these people like who came out to see him you know Mm -hmm. did he interact with the fans afterwards yeah he uh, people lined up with records to sign probably some Moody's mostly what I saw was Band on the Run people were getting that signed what were they what were they sell did he sell any CDs I know when I saw him several years ago he was selling a handmade CD of his own that actually had McCartney songs on it. I mean, actual McCartney songs, which is kind of interesting. I don't think there was any merch going on. I don't think so. Really? Okay. I don't think so. Like, the band was really, really good. I mean, you it sounded like Band on the Run. I mean, it was just, you know, like, with every little flourish that you'd expect to hear. Huh. Like, they really got it. It was really well done. So you'd recommend it? You'd recommend the show for anybody that... You know, I mean, this it was a nice venue that it was at the Boston City Winery. I guess city wineries are, it's kind of a chain, so I yeah. guess a lot of 
uh, places have them. It was nice. I had never been there before, which actually part of my motivation for going was, oh, I, you know, I've been to the winery. I like to see what this venue's like. It was very nice. It was it was a good time. Okay, all right. Well, thank you, Candy. I think I think we we ruminated about get enough and uh, in quite a bit. Um, Let me just say before we go that oh. I don't, you know, I've been accused of being sort of too pro John and anti Paul and all this. And you have. Yeah, <laughs> and you know, like, okay. I, if I if I didn't care, I wouldn't care. You know, what I mean, like I, I mean, I love Paul, and I and I think he's wonderful, and he's a tr he's a global treasure. You know, you know, make sure that I say that. Yeah, you know? and I'm 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 that way too. I mean, I you know, a lot of what I I mean, I as a as a critic i mean I, i'm gonna say things that probably people are going to disagree with but you know that's um, people disagree with me i mean that's the way it is um it, it's you know it happens what what can you say right that's, one last thing i want to say about get enough what did you think of the cover art that was with the uh that was associated with it it went along with the with the album actually and it's gonna and and the the rumor, of course, has been that this is a prelude to a deluxe Egypt station. Um, I'm not sure. I I am all that thrilled about a, a another version of Egypt station so soon, but we'll see. I mean, I, I the, if you're talking about specifically the image on the cover, I really didn't pay it that much attention. Well, you should take a note. I mean, to me, it was very evocative of Abbey Road. It had these four figures, almost ghost-like figures, mm -hmm. walking across. I mean, as soon as I saw it, I thought Abbey Road. Okay. Do you know what I mean? I'm looking at it now, actually. Yeah, yeah kind of. Anytime you have four figures like that. And standing one in back of the other, yeah, it's going to... As gonna, it happens to be a Paul McCartney product. <laughs> right. I mean, that, yeah, that's going to... And I would add, too, if you listen to the lyrics of the first two verses of the song, he could be talking about the Beatles. Ah, we could, we could, we could, we could get into that, uh, start a, another discussion and probably talk about that for another half hour, but... I mean, also, I mean, he's been talking in interviews lately about how he misses John and George and all this. And I think that, you know, I mean, it, I mean, it, it becomes a love song. But the if you listen to the first couple of verses, it's it's mm -hmm. more sort of bigger. You know, it's about it, it could be about something else. besides okay, that. Yeah. OK. Thank, all right. Thank, thank you very much, Candy. Well, this was a lot of fun. Yes, it was. As it always is. As it as it as it always is. Thank you for thank you for talking and folks. Thank you for listening. We'll be ba back in a minute. Welcome back to the show. On this day in history, January twelfth, nineteen sixty four, the Beatles appeared on the show Sunday night at the London Palladium, performing "I Want to Hold Your Hand," "This Boy," "All My Lovin'," "Money," and "Twist and Shout." On January 13, 1963, the Beatles recorded an appearance on Thank Your Lucky Stars, playing their new single, Please Please Me. The show was broadcast six days later. Born on this day on January 12, 1941, is Long John Baldry, who's known in the U.S. for conditional discharge and Don't Try to Lay No Boogie Woogie on the King of Rock and Roll, and in the U.K. for the ballad Let the Heartaches Begin. He also sang with British blues man Alexis Corner and led bands that featured Rod Stewart, Julie Driscoll, and Elton John. But his, he does have a Beatle connection, and that is that he performed Got My Mojo Working with the Vernon Girls in the TV special Around the Beatles in 1964. Yes, that was him singing. He was also known to some of you, the probably the younger people that are listening to me, as the voice of Dr. Robotnik in Sonic the Hedgehog. You didn't know that, I bet, huh? As we mentioned at the top of the show, you can now catch our shows on BeatlesArama.com, and thanks again to Pat for bringing them to you there. And previously, they've been available on Fab4Radio.com, and thanks to Matt for that. 
and also on iTunes, YouTube, Google Play, or wherever you get your podcasts. Join our Beatles News and Information Group on Facebook for the latest in the Beatles world that we post regularly. And also check out our That's What I Want Beatles Store page on Facebook for gift ideas for yourself or for your favorite people. Please look for our next show and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. We'd very much appreciate it. Until next time, this is Steve Marinucci saying... Be seeing you. that one market fab